Hey guys, welcome to the top five mistakes beginners make while trading futures or any trading for that matter. All of these lessons are learned by myself, others on the trading floor, and the sort of the collective shared experiences of many who have come before as well. All of these bumps and bruises uh, learned along the way. I'm Bogdan, I'm one of the junior traders here on the London trading floor, and I'll be taking you through the rest of this video. Okay, so mistake number one, and that's putting yourself into a box too early into your career. So too many times I see a lot of new traders, a lot of the junior traders on our floor, on Twitter, on internet forums and so on, who love to put labels on the kind of trading they do and on the kind of traders others do. And of course, this just extends to everyday life. It's not just trading, but obviously within our sphere, we see this a lot where, you know, a trader may see how a piece of news affects uh, uh, markets and the huge burst of volatility, and they may get scared, you know, and then start making excuses like, you know, I can't trade this, I'm not a news trader. Or someone who may trade news very well may say, you know, may look at a chart and say, oh, you know, I, I can't make sense of this, uh, I can't be consistent in this kind of trading. And so they say, you know, I'm not a technical trader, I am a, a news trader or something else. Or people say, you know, I can't understand these charts, uh, I'm going to be a scalper or X, Y, and Z. So here's basically two mistakes. A, you are trying to cut the market up into a very small, convenient box for you to understand, which is a mistake. So first of all, especially if you've been, if you're, if you're new to trading, you have the outsider's perspective, you have newbie eyes to look at the market. It's very difficult to break up a very complex organism, a complex system like markets into a very convenient box for you to understand it. For example, for those who are very, you know, who say they don't look at news, they don't look at fundamentals because it's all reflected in a chart. It is too aggressive to discount it as such, especially early in your career. Now, those who are very new to trading will find someone who is just a, a chartist who trades technicals, okay? And they, and they, they, you know, they could be a very profitable and a very senior trader, but that's just because of the, their experienced eyes, the lens in which they see things and the way they would describe certain things, see certain things may seem completely different to you and would lead you down the wrong path into overly specialized, shall we say, too early in your career. You're going to say, you know, I'm only trading technicals, but then you will never be open. You'll never open your mind to the possibility of trading news. And you don't know, you might end up being a fantastic uh, fundamentals news trader or vice versa. You may, you know, segment or pigeonhole yourself into trading only news. And then you may not realize that you can actually be a very good um, you know, technician trading market profile uh, and so on. And so it's this constant, you know, need to somehow label yourself and then to take it one, one step further, you see this a lot on online communities where people like to place themselves in various tribes. Like I'm only trading on ladder and my tribe is the best, the price ladder tribe. And there's no other, you know, I'm the best, everyone else is an idiot. Um, nothing else works and so on. So it is very dangerous leading down that path. And, uh, you know, to be very, you know, worried of, you should be worried if you're, if you're going down that path. Now, what I would say is if you have f been finding yourself, if you have been trading for only, you know, a few months, even up to a year, even up to two years, whatever, you should not be making these kind of claims. Like I am an X, Y, and Z trader because the markets will evolve and you have to understand where you place yourself within that. So, you know, someone who may say I'm only a scalper when they've started, uh, you know, trading for two months or, or so on. I, I find that very difficult to believe because they wouldn't have had time to experience the multitude of the various angles you can approach markets and understand the market holistically to give you that correct opinion in that way. Okay, so let's talk about mistake number two, which is going live too early, going on a live account too early or perhaps uh, putting too much pressure on yourself too early. So this is one mistake I made very intimately at the beginning of my trading career. And I see this time and time again, which is this obsession to race, to trade live or to trade with some kind of skin in the game, however derived, too early. Now, obviously, don't get me wrong. Skin in the game is essential, especially when learning, but that should come much, much, much later down the learning curve than one would expect. I see this a lot with a lot of the junior traders where their ability to learn, their ability to soak in information so well, so in such a pure sense with no, um, you know, with no emotional attachment to it, 
is, is very high quality. It's, a, it's, a, it's at a very high level. The minute they add pressure to themselves, even if they're not live, but let's say they, there is a requirement for them to pass a funding trial to go live, or they meet certain uh, criteria that they now have to pass through someone monitoring their progression as a trader. So in any case, whatever pressure you apply too early, then is when the learning is stumped it's stalling you are regressing too early and so again I, i've experienced this a lot in my career you know i had to spin my wheels for a very very long time it's very easy to delude yourself that you are learning when in fact you are not which is going to be my point number three i will make uh, a bit later in the video but it's it's um it's, it's very easy to fall down that path now let's take someone else as well someone who is my desk mate you know for a very long time uh, as well so my desk mate here on the on on the london trading floor he was on the sim for about 16 months before he went live now of course during that 16 months he also had a period where he had to pass a sort of a rules-based assessment for him to be funded to go live nevertheless 16 months for him to go live most people watching this video right now myself included would not spend anywhere near that amount of time watching markets, studying markets, really reflecting on what they're learning, okay? Too many of us will go in head first, diving in head, head first, thinking, you know, they've got this, this is easy and so on, only to really not only drop your whole account to lose a lot of money, but then to not really learn anything from it. There's no takeaway. I guess it's putting that much pressure too early in someone's career is just gonna stall or, just, or, or basically just kill a lot of careers needlessly in the crib uh, because because of that rush, that agitation, that FOMO to get live as, as soon as possible. Of course, not understanding that opportunity is abundant, opportunities everywhere, especially in the markets. It's just your perception of looking at it. And therefore, again, by stalling, that learning experience is a huge, huge, uh, you know, mistake a lot of beginners make, again, myself included. Many other people have made this mistake before and will continue to make this mistake. But hopefully you will not be one of them joining in making this kind of mistake. Okay, so let's talk then about mistake number three. And this is really something everyone can implement right now uh, to solve from day one, and they should do it from day one because your learning and your progression does not start until you get these things right, which is a proper routine and a proper structure every single day, weekends included, which means you're gonna show up and have a, a, a morning routine. You can have a preparation routine before the market open. You're gonna consistently trade the same market hours for as long as possible uh, every single day when the markets are open. And then you're gonna go through a period of reflection, of debriefing when markets, when trading has finished. And of course, doing something of, of, of a more macro, a, a wider approach on the weekends. That is the bare minimum. That is the bare minimum entry requirement of hard work that you should be doing to even be considering having a career um, in trading and beyond that. You should not be doing this then just because you've watched this video and then you know you're going through the emotions and you know you're ticking off boxes you should be reflecting then on what is a proper debrief for you what are you trying to capture from the markets what are you trying what evidence are you trying to learn um, how are you understanding the market through your own lens it is so many of, uh, so many of these little things which you it's easy to roll your eyes it's easy for your eyes to glaze over and you know, perhaps you skip, but it's probably the most important point in this entire video that everyone, even someone who hasn't even traded before, can take away now. You need to have a learning system, a debriefing system, a way for you to reflect on good trades, bad trades, and understanding where that is. And in fact, even before you understand what were your good trades and your bad trades, you should not even be thinking of trading to begin with, depending where you are in your career. Relating to mistake number two, which is going, you know, putting pressure too much uh, on yourself too early. Even by being on the sim, trading, thinking about taking trades, is one step removed from pure learning. And when I bring up pure learning, what do I mean? It's sitting there, day in, day out, not taking trades, even on the no consequence simulator. It's just sitting there, observing markets, holistically, looking at how they reprice risk, how they price risk, how news affects them, how news doesn't affect them 
how the market profile looks like, how the order flow looks like when you know markets move around and everything. So you're soaking in that, how you're learning from that process, and then you're adding another layer of debriefing of learning. And then once you've slowly applied the pressure at the correct time, then you're thinking, okay, now how do I improve my processes? How do I extract more from my good trades? How do I extract, uh, you know, start incurring so much damage from my bad trades? And so on. And this is not, again, an exercise where you're just entering an Excel sheet of entry, exit, uh, size that I took, and so on. It's much, much deeper than that, where, you know, we talk a lot about this on the trading floor, especially uh, at Axia, where the nuances in your trade, how are you placing these nuances? Uh, what sort of features was unique to that trade that you can see uh, perhaps next time and therefore not so unique uh, when you first approached it and so on. So all of this is having some kind of structure to just not crumple under the pressure you will apply to yourself, hopefully not too soon, but eventually you'll have to apply yourself through. Will I now have to pass you know, a funding trial? Will I now uh, slowly work into trading a live account and so on? And without that consistent process to lean on when the going gets tough, when you will start performing badly. Having that routine, having these processes in place, which you fundamentally believe in religiously, will get you through those periods. And again, so many of the traders here on the floor can tell you, can, can attest to this, you know, at, at a moment's notice, they'll tell you the very same thing, that all of these things you can rely on uh, that can be consistent variables in your life. And uh, you need them now more than ever when you're you know, experiencing bad trading or you're, you're trying to go through that patch of going from you know, simulation to live trading and then live trading to performance. And then eventually you, you, know, you turn this into a, a fully fledged career. So again, that is mistake number three, which is people just do not do this. They do not even perhaps know the concept of this, that, you know, you shouldn't be waking up five minutes before markets are open, you know, look at a price ladder, see things are moving and then enter trades. What have you achieved there? You have achieved absolutely nothing. You should be getting up way before the markets are open. You should be thinking, you know, what have they done? What is the most recent news? Thinking about things multidimensionally. And then that is part one of the day. And then, you know, you build, you build the day um, with as many controllables as you can, which is, of course, the sort of the sales or, or sort of the tool or the weapon you will need to use when you enter this murky, complex uh, system, you know, organism that is the markets. And that will be, you know, the bare minimum requirement you will need to achieve to survive right at the beginning of your careers. Okay, so let's talk about mistake number four. And really, this is something uh, that amounts to absolving responsibility for oneself. So this manifests itself into many, many different ways. But one of the most popular ones, which we see repeatedly, is blaming things on the algos, blaming things on the HFTs and, and, and this sort of stuff. And really where this comes from is two things. One, you would actually notice that the less time someone has been actually trading, the more opinionated they are on this. The less time someone's been trading, the more they'll tell you, absolutely, this thing can't be done. They'll tell you, order flow doesn't work. They'll tell you, charts don't work. They'll tell you, you can't trade news because of the algos. They'll tell you, they'll, they'll use this escape mechanism because they still don't understand it, because they expect it, they will trade markets for two weeks, uh, they'll do amazingly well, and if they can't get it, no one else can, so there must be some kind of catch, there must be some kind of thing which makes it impossible for anyone to trade, and they know because they read some forum post about someone or some tweet about some random stranger saying how it's impossible because of the HFTs, which probably was written by them because they also can't perform to a high level and they find some kind of mechanism to absolve responsibility. Now, the big mistake for you is latching onto this and then flying under the banner of you can't trade order flow because of the HFTs. You can't trade charts because there's some kind of retail newbies who attach themselves to charts and there's no value in charts or X, Y, and Z. There's always some kind of mentality that tries to pull you down and restricting and boxing yourself in from opening your mind to various edges opportunities that are in the market and so really the mistake is understanding this kind of feature where so much of this conversation is made by either people who have traded for very little amount of time who may have traded before and were successful and now are no longer successful because they're trying to absolve responsibility on something and you enter this fear which is very very difficult and uh, to be honest, you will not know any better because you have also started trade, uh, you know, been interested in trading for a month, two months, three months, four months, 
but this is if someone's telling you if someone's making you aware as i am now of continuous issue that we see a lot we hear perhaps from people who are joining the you know the axia course or we see this online or we get emails about this you know on a regular basis we get emails from people asking can you trade on the price ladder because of the hfts uh which by the way you very much can but uh so this is where I'm getting at in the sense of trying to relate it to mistake number one. Do not box yourself into this kind of negative thinking, this sort of this um, mentality which does not seek abundance of opportunity. So regardless of what's going on, there'll always be opportunity in the markets. It's just you have to be open minded enough to shift your perspective and to take advantage of these market features and opportunities that will come. If there is one opportunity market, um, you know, edge or feature of a market which is now no longer tradable okay then it's your responsibility to readapt relearn and move on instead of then absolving responsibility saying oh i can't do this because of evil x y and z and then you post on twitter all day long and that becomes your sort of your identity or your sort of uh, you know your ability to cry um, on the shoulder of others so again be very aware to not copy the regurgitate what others say especially if you've been trading for two weeks three weeks a month two months three months who are you to say in fact someone who's been so new to this profession and industry who are you to say after no, not even knowing about what trading is six months ago to now have the confidence the experience to say you can't do x y and z because of hfts because of this and that so again it's funny to see that many of the people who will give you these strong opinions probably have not been trading for very long and as you go across the curve of people who, who are consistently profitable who are career traders who have been trading for a very long time you'll notice the abundance of opportunity and how they've shifted their careers from trading one thing many years ago and now are trading something completely different and in the next five years they'll also probably have evolved their trading to suit the current market and that is the story of everyone especially all the senior traders uh, here on the prop floor they can all attest to this of how you have this constant evolution and should not get dragged down by others with this 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 sort of um, negative mentality or this this way to absolve responsibility and you know of course I, I don't seek to blame anyone because it's a very easy thing to do we all do it in our lives but again it is your responsibility to catch that out and to not let it sort of stunt your growth as a trader again in this critical critical learning phase right at the beginning of your trading career okay so mistake number five it's not understanding at a granular level the tools you are using or the markets you are trading so for example there's plenty of people who will claim that they are order flow traders yet if you talk about using a footprint if you talk about you know using certain things uh, like the delta you know delta on charts or, or anything even by the simple questions they ask you on how this relates to that you know that they don't intuitively understand how the price ladder mechanics work. And that's because the questions they ask me, if they truly understand price ladder mechanics, for example, they can derive, they can intuitively figure out the answer to their question. So it's very easy for me to pick out those who you know don't understand the, the minute nuances. And, it, and then as a side note, I've actually done a whole stream on you know basic price ladder mechanics, but it's just understanding like what does a trader taking the initiative look like in at market orders lifting the offer aggressively versus someone who is trying to get in you know uh, trying to attain a market position through a limit order which we would classify him as a more passive participant depending on what's going on you know the various auction process uh, think understanding very intimately and you know quickly of you know what happens when someone has to liquidate how does he you know how does that interact with the price ladder we can go on from there for example again talking about putting a label on yourself putting a, a pigeonholing yourself too early it seems to be a case of more of, of, of newer traders these days who all seem to be attached to trading uh, equities equity markets or equity futures like the s p like the dax and so on and fair enough it, it, you know if you ha if you find edge and you want to and you want to trade those markets that's great there's absolutely there's plenty of opportunity everywhere but when you're so new in your career do not filter into those markets because of this perception that they're somehow easier to understand because for example the bonds and the rates market are too difficult to understand it is your duty to be if this is your career to understand every single asset class intimately and to expose yourself to those opportunities as early as possible because there's fantastic opportunities to be found, for example, in the bonds, in the rates, 
and so on or you know trading central banks which is a specialism of the floor and by you not doing justice to yourself by putting in the hard work you just understand learning what are bonds uh, what is the yield curve x y and z you know uh, market fundamentals about uh, uh, the energy markets uh, crude oil uh, understanding currencies and so on you're putting a fence around your universe of which you may fa find fantastic opportunity later as an edge to trade which you'll never come across if you don't put in the work now to understand things at a granular level now yes does it take time of course it does but this is why you're not putting pressure on yourself too early as you know as one of the mistakes uh, i highlighted earlier where you're giving yourself enough time to say okay you know i'm learning about markets and you know all these tools i'm saying i i'm, I'm looking at you know the price ladder the profile and many other things but i'm also going to take the time to understand the derivatives i'm trading what are what are actually futures in the first place why am i even trading futures you know what's the underlying market uh, you know what do uh, how do bonds behave in certain market conditions how do the equities behave and so on so again it is making sure you don't in a way absolve responsibility as well by saying you know this is too difficult for me to understand and so on it is your duty to self-learn self-educate you know or you know reach out to others and help them tell you you know all, all about these sort of uh, little details as it were and uh, and again that's just not that is market fundamentals you know asset class fundamentals but it extends to the tools you're using the price ladder the profile the footprint and everything to know this to a granular level because you're you, you are building a whole career for the rest of your life ideally into this field it is beyond belief that as so many people have gone by through years of saying they trade on the price ladder but do not know basic price ladder mechanics it is inconceivable to think that you know high level athletes don't know the basic uh, basic functionality of the race car they drive or some basic functionality of, of a golf club or something just to say random examples and again treat yourself as a high level athlete you're, you're building yourself to have a high level ath athletic career uh, which is the best metaphor in trading and you're building all these skills you're, you're becoming a multi-dimensional trader and that requires a lot of different skills that are completely different from each other you are building this as time goes by because it, it is an investment in time it is a very difficult profession and it is akin to something of a high caliber profession a high caliber sport which you know to remind everyone there is no amateur league in trading which you know we've all highlighted before you will be competing with everyone who intimately understands the price ladder knows to the nth degree everything there is to know about asset class fundamentals in multiple different asset classes you'll be competing on the same level as them so for you to even have hope of reaching that kind of level you have to be putting in the work early in your career and understand you know what are the bonds what are the equities what are the currencies what are the commodities uh, the fundamentals of a market interaction what does it mean when a participant is forced to liquidate and all of these things so that is mistake number five of not you know understanding things on a granular level on an intimate level and taking things at face value okay guys those were the top five mistakes i really hope you've found a lot of value in that leave a comment below as well if any of this material resonated with you i'll be very curious tell me if any light bulbs have gone off if anything clicked for you if you have made these sort of mistakes before if uh, perhaps i may have saved you from making any of these mistakes and I really think that just by avo avoiding a lot of these, these very simple mistakes to make, but these very big ones, you can be well, well, well ahead of the curve in learning, in, in, in placing uh, trading in its right context, in succeeding and making it as a trading career. Uh, so thank you very much for joining me, guys, and I hope to see you in another video. If you find this video interesting, if you want to go deep into the Axia training method and how a trading team of seven-figure traders develop setups and strategies, and how they learn to build the most profitable trades across all market environments, then join me in this workshop. Now in this workshop, you're going to learn three powerful steps we use to train all our traders on both our London and our Poland trading desks to help build incredible levels of consistency. How to predictably understand which setups work and which don't. You're going to learn our two main strategies for how we perfect our trade timing before we enter every single trade. You're going to learn the VEL concept, which is our one and only technique we use to leverage our largest trades. You'll also learn how to avoid trading setups that don't work, how to avoid those large losses, and our main method we use to identify them that saves our traders significant amounts of capital. 
Finally, you will learn how our traders use the power of network learning to find market patterns quicker than ever before. So you shortcut that learning curve. In the workshop, we want to program your awareness of elite performance, to program your ability to choose the right setups, and program your ability to be a consistent trader. So the trades that you execute become more simple and clearer. And I can tell you this, you'll never see the markets the same again. You'll never look at the markets with a narrow view of getting lost in all the noise and confusion. You'll take a first step towards a deep edge market awareness. I cannot wait for you to join me in this workshop. And I think you're in for a massive paradigm shift in your understanding of how to develop as a trader. So join me by clicking on the top right hand corner of the screen and sign up for this powerful training workshop or visit EliteTraderWorkshop.com.